Okay, so we are solving rational word problems. Um, the first section of word problems is proportions. So proportions are where you'll set things up as fractions. You'll cross multiply and solve. So on number one and two, they're already set up. And we're literally just going to cross multiply. So what's 5 times x? 5x. Bring down your equal sign. And then what's 45 times 7? 315. Okay. Now what do I do to solve for x? Divide both sides by what? 5. And now I have x equals what? 63. 63. There's my answer. Okay. So same thing on number 2. We're going to cross multiply. But because there's a binomial, we're going to set it up as distribution. So that's what we have. Now what? I already cross multiplied. Uh, I mean, uh, Distribute. So 3 times x is 3x. 3 times 2 is 6. Bring down your equal sign. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 5 is negative 25. How do I solve this? Yeah, I would do minus 3x on both sides. What else do I need to move? Huh? The 25. How do I move minus 25? And I end up with 31 equals 2x. Now what? Divide. divide by 2, divide by 2, and I get x equals 31 over 2. However, if you type this in your calculator, you'll get a decimal. And is it a pretty decimal or an ugly decimal? Okay. It's pretty. So I don't mind if you write it as a decimal. However, what if it was um, like 31 31 over 3. That's an ugly decimal. Why is that an ugly decimal? It yeah, it goes on forever, and I would have to round it to write it down. If you have to round, you're leaving it as a fraction, yes? Now, if the problem gives you decimals, can you give a decimal back? Yeah. Yes. Okay, look at number 3. Now we're going into the word problems of it. So number three says how many people, or sorry, many people still rent movies and video games with Redbox. You can tell this is an old problem because I don't feel like people will use Redbox anymore. Um, if renting three movies costs four fifty, how much should five movies cost? So I know that there are other ways to solve this one, but we're going to set it up as proportions because that's what we're practicing. So we're going to do number, there's two things we know. We know the number of movies and we know the cost, right? So I'm going to set up my two fractions as number of movies over cost. So my first one is three movies over the cost of 450 equals five movies over a cost we don't know. So now I'm going to cross multiply. What's five times 450? 2, no, 4.5. And then 3 times x is 3x, so this is 22.5. Now what? Divide. By? 3. Mm-hmm. And I get x equals 7.5. Now, is that my final answer? Mm -hmm. How do I write it? Well, you could do a sentence. Could you also just say $7.50? Mm -hmm. Okay, these are different. 7.5 and $7.50 are different. You have to label with word problems, yes? Okay, look at number four. Now, I'm about to throw out two numbers that obviously do not make sense to this problem, but just pretend with me for a second. So if this was four and we said this is eight, do I need all three side lengths to solve for just my one missing side, or do I just need two? I just need two. So cross off the one you don't want to use. We're not going to use that one because it's not proper. Okay, so knowing that, we're going to set up these the same. And I have to cross off the same one. See how I cross off the bottom here? Got to cross off the bottom here. I can't, like, cross off the bottom and then the top. Okay, it has to be the same side. So knowing that, I'm going to set this up as short over long. So my short side over here is 2 over the long side is 10 equals my short side is 3 over the long side is x.
How do I solve this? Yeah, what's 3 times 10? Mm -hmm. Equals 2 times x, which is 2x. Now what? Now what does x equal? 15 what? If you do not label, I will take points off. I'm going to have you all check your work with me, and I'll tell you it's right, but I'm still going to take off points if you don't label. I don't know. Okay, so that's my last proportion problem that we're going to do together. Now we're going to look at work rates. So if Sam and Frank work in a plant that manufactures automobiles, Sam can complete a quality control tour of a plant in three hours, while his assistant Frank needs seven hours to complete the same job. The regional manager is coming to inspect the plant facility, so both Sam and Frank are directed to complete the quality control together. How long will it take? Okay, so now we're going to break it down. And we're going to use a table. We have Sam, we have Frank, and then we have them together. So total time, how long was it going to take Sam to do it by himself? Three hours. How long is it going to take Frank to do it by himself? How long is it going to take them to do it together? No. We don't know. We don't know. So what do we use for what we don't know? Now, I can't just add these because that would tell me if they both did it separately. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So what the way we're going to look at it is in one hour. We're going to think about in a one hour time period. In one hour, how much will Sam have completed? If it takes him three hours to complete the whole thing, one third. it's going to be one third. <coughs> He's going to be a third the way done with the plant control, whatever, whatever he's doing. Okay? In an hour, how much is Sam, uh, Frank going to have done? One-seventh. One so together, well, they would have completed what we don't know, one over something. So now, because we're looking at it in a one-hour aspect, we can combine them. So this plus this will equal their total together. And then that will help us find x. So knowing that I have one-third plus 1 seventh equals 1 over x. And to solve this, I need to find my LCD. What was the LCD going to be? What can 3 and 7 both turn into? 21. But this one has an x, so they all need an x. What do I need to multiply 3 by to become 21x? 7 what? Yeah, so times 7x on the top and bottom. Well, 3 times 7x is 21x, so now that has my common denominator. What does 7 need to become a 21x? 3 what? X. So I'm going to multiply top and bottom by 3x, and this becomes 21x, so that one's good now. What does the x need to become 21x? 21. So times 21 times 21, and that becomes 21x. Are all my denominators the LCD now? Mm -hmm. So can we cancel them? Yeah. So knowing that, what's 1 times 7x? 7x. Plus 1 times 3x? 3x. And then 1 times 21. 21. Now can we solve it? Mm -hmm. So what's 7x plus 3x? Mm -hmm. Divide both sides by 10, and I get x equals 2.1. Now, when we talk about time, that's not proper. And now we know the total time together. So the whole number represents what? Hours. Hour. So I know it's going to be two hours. But how do I know how many minutes? You're going to take your decimal, which was just 0.1, and you're going to multiply it by 60 because there's 60 minutes in an hour. And that gives me six minutes. So two hours and six minutes. Because if I tell you 2.1 hours, does that do you know that that's six minutes? No. Put it away, please. So you do 2.1. You just do 0 0.1 times 60. Okay. If you did 2.1 times 60, you would have only minutes with no hours. Okay, look at the back. So we have another one just like that one. And I want y'all to set it up. 
So read through and set it up. Everybody should have their pencil in their hand. Trying. Everybody should be trying. Okay, so this is what your table should look like. Cindy took three hours, Mary took four hours, and together we don't know. So we think about it in a one hour aspect and we set it up. What is my LCD gonna be here? Yeah, 12X. So how do I turn a three into a 12X? times 4x, top and bottom, and that gives me 12x. How do I turn a 4 into a 12x? Times 3x, top and bottom. How do I turn an x? Do my denominators match? So now we have 4x plus 3x equals 12. What's 4x plus 3x? Now what? And we get one point, this really ugly fraction. So we're going to guess or simplify in a decimal because we have to turn this into hours and minutes. Are you really going to memorize all those decimal places? No. So we have one hour. How do I find my minutes? Uh, 0 0.7 times 60. 0 0.7 times 60 and 42 minutes. What does that wiggly equal sign mean? Approximate. Approximate. It's because I rounded. Any questions on this one? Okay, now we're going to look at our distance problems. Okay, so we know that distance equals rate times time. Therefore, if I were to solve D equals R times T for T, wouldn't I just divide both sides by R? Because how do you get rid of multiplication? You divide. So doesn't time equal distance over rate? I could also even find rate. Rate would be distance over time because I would divide by T. So you can solve for whatever letter you want. Yes? However, we're talking about time here. So a car travels 180 miles in the same time that a truck travels 120 miles. So I know the car is going 180 and the truck's going 120. If the car speed is 20 miles per hour faster than the truck, well, do I know the truck speed? So what do I use? And what would be the car's speed? Nope. X plus 20. Now, the only thing it tells me about time is that they're the same. We know that these two times are equal. They're the same. It says find the car speed and truck speed. Well, we need to figure out time so we can set them equal to each other because that's the only thing we know that's equal. Their rates are not equal. Their distances are not equal. We have to find our time. So knowing that, I know that I can set up time as distance over rate. So I'm going to set it up as 120 over x and 180 over x plus 20. I can't use a different letter because if I throw in y, I can't solve anymore because I'll have two different variables and I can't figure out what y equals then. So we have to set it up using what we already know. 
Well, now I know those are equal, so I'm going to have 120 over x equals 180 over x plus 20. Do we know how to solve that? Yeah, cross-multiply. Yeah, we're going to cross-multiply. So 180 times x is 180x. Bring down my equal sign. 120, and I have to distribute this. So 120 times x is 120x. 120 times 20 is 2400. Now how do I solve that? Uh, and that leaves me with 60x equals 2400. Now what? Divide. By? 60. And I get x equals 40. Okay, well, knowing that, I'm going to go back to my question. It says find the car speed and the truck speed. What represents the truck speed? X, and what does X equal? 40. So we know that the truck was driving how fast? 40. 40 what? Uh, miles. miles per hour. And the car? 70. No. 60. Oh, 60. 20 more. Okay, one more. I want y'all to read number eight, and I want y'all to set up the table. You have to draw the table. I know. It's terrible. this is what you should have. So I'm going to set mine equal to each other. And I'm going to distribute. So I have to distribute this 180x. 180 times 15 is 2,700. Subtract 180. There's 60 again. Divide by 60. And I get 45. So now I want you to realize it could ask you time and it could also ask you their speeds because could we plug X in for time? Yeah. yeah. We could also plug it in for rates. We already know the distance, so it shouldn't ask you distance. So knowing that, the bus traveled how fast? Uh, 45. Miles per hour. And the car? 60. Okay, so knowing that... Look at the practice. One through four, you can leave them as fractions. However, two of them are pretty decimal, so could you turn those into decimals? But if you have to round, should you turn it into a decimal? No. If you don't want to write the whole thing, leave it as a fraction. And they need to be simplified, yes? Okay, um, do you need all three sides for these triangles? No. No, cross off the side you don't want to use. Um... Number eight, I want you to leave as a fraction because it's not a pretty decimal. Okay, so this is what you're working on. If you have questions, what should you do? Ask. If you finish.